do me a favor and answer this. Do you remember this game? Or this one? Or maybe this one? Or even this one? If you do, close your eyes and picture those games. What do you see? Terrible broken old games? Yeah, me too. But today, I figured almost six years after I made the first Rust game, we'd dive back in one last time, head first. I'd play them one last time and explain what they all meant, and it's probably not going to be as exciting as you'd hope. But I figured it'd be something interesting to do because I actually haven't played most of these games since the moment I released them, and I've actually forgotten a lot about them. But I know a lot of you guys want some answers six years later. So we're going to go through each one and we're going to see, uh, we're going to answer some freaking questions, man. So we'll start with the OG, the very first Rust game I ever made, the classic Rust. I'll open it in studio, we'll, uh, we'll take a look at it, I'll explain everything about it. But basically, as you'll see with all these Rust games, everything basically just meant kind of nothing. Okay, so here we are in studio, we'll click play, you probably know the deal with this game, you probably know it really well. It starts off the same for everybody, verifying subject, and then like, you know, it says your username, or it says you've been identified as Flamingo. Big scary, I know. This thing down here, I think people asked about, uh, this thing does not do anything. It has no purpose. It's asked for a developer password. There is none. I don't know why I had it there. Maybe I plan to do something, but it is nothing right now. Is this correct? Yeah, of course it is. There's really not much to explain about this game. It's the same as it always is. You know, you pick up the phone. There's a freaky little goblin here that used to have a scary face, but I guess Roblox removed that. And it says user has been logged. The big secret, there is no log. Oh, I don't know how to do that. Over here is a computer, which doesn't work anymore, but it would take you into the other games. But I guess Roblox broke it at some point. But that's literally all there is to this game. There's nothing else. So the second Rust game I made was Smile. This is probably my favorite one I made out of this series. This one was really fun to make. So I think here, this is the ending of the game where... Uh, it would put like the three people playing up on these chairs. Okay, so yeah, that's where that is. There's uh, the secret revealed. Here's the Rust Smile map. Um, This game was also pretty simple. Most of the Rust games were just like simple, but it would take a while to figure out how to do it. So I guess it worked. Here's like uh one of the creatures, I guess. The little goblins that would uh run around the map, you know, doing freaky things. Yeah, so it had these fake players, and this was actually probably my favorite part of the Rust game. I never intended for this to, like, become a big part of Rust, like the fake players, but it just stuck, and I thought it was cool, so I kept doing it, but yeah, there's not that much going on in this game. So right here, I think, is all the fake players that I had that could be put in. Yeah, here we go. So I think what I had it do is I'd have these uh, players set, and then it just put a random username on them. But I think I just went into like a natural disaster survival lobby and just like stole everybody's outfit that they had selected. So that's what that is. So I'm pretty sure this is the third one. This is where things took like a different step. I don't know. I tried something different with this game. This one was all right. It was like single player. Um, I don't know. There was some weird stuff going on with this game. I don't know what I was trying to do. This is like more a horror game. And like that's kind of what Rust was supposed to be. Like I didn't even know what, what myths were when I made rust i just wanted to make some scary games but uh this one was pretty cool actually i kind of like this one that used to be scary but i guess it doesn't really work properly anymore oh uh, this one there's not much going on you go around the map you'd find like some crystals i literally have no idea what i was doing i was like rust games pretty much you'll come to see in this video they were just random games i decided to make they really didn't have much of a connection i never had like a story made for rust like People might be disappointed with that, but there wasn't really a story. It kind of just like evolved over time into something, but I never went in with any intentions to make a story. You'd find these blue crystals like uh, some astrology girl or something, but I don't know. You'd put it into like this freaking thing and then you'd go, oh, okay, I remember. Oh, actually, I do not remember. Hold on, we're going to find out together. Oh my god, I forgot the computers don't work. Alright, I think this would put you into the next game, probably. Okay, this one, according to the Rust wiki page, which I did not make, but according to it, this is the next game in the series. I don't remember what order I had these in, so we're just going to rely on that. But um, this one, I actually don't even remember what game this is, so we're going we're gonna to find out together right now. 
Okay, this one, I remember this game was terrible. This is a Rust game we can just forget about. We can throw it in the trash. This one was awful. It was another single player like horror game. Nothing of importance happened. Uh, there was no purpose for this thing. I think people asked about that. Um, yeah, this game was pretty terrible. We can forget this ever happened. All right, then we got Happy. This is probably one of my favorites as well. It was basically just Smile, but in a different form. You see, it's called Happy instead of Smile this time. It took a lot of time to figure that one out. Okay, there we go. Yeah, this is basically just Smile, but in a slightly better form. Uh, basically, I just spent more time on it. It was a little more thought out. This one might actually be my favorite above Smile. I don't know. This one was pretty cool, though. I don't really remember what you had to do, but... You had to get four people here, and uh, there was some sort of thing over here, which I guess I had it so it doesn't load in all the time. Yeah, then you'd uh, go into this, like, cavern thing. I don't know. Cathedral. I don't know. And then you'd go through here. You'd beat the game. You'd go to the sunken place. The sunken place was kind of cool, all right? Inspiration from a Stranger Things, probably. That was probably what I was thinking. Uh, sunken place, that's where you'd go to after Happy. This one, there was literally nothing going on, but this was just like kind of a cool atmosphere. I don't know. I liked it. There used to be music in here, but I guess Roblox probably removed it. Um, This game, you'd actually do nothing. You'd just find like some secret pit. Yeah, here we go. And then it'd teleport you to the next game. Okay, so after the sunken place, it would send you to Sleepy Meadows, but it looks like I don't have that game anymore. I think I actually had it on Jimmy Biscuit. Alright, so here we are on Jimmy Biscuit. I don't remember if I hosted the game actually on here, or if this was just a clone. I think it was just supposed to be, like, not accessible normally. But, uh, this game was pretty cool. I like this. I think I based this off of some ghost town in, uh, maybe it was actually in Manitoba. I don't remember. A lot of these games with, like, abandoned buildings in them were just because, uh, I liked abandoned buildings and I wanted to put them in a game. This game, I think, was the first one where I had it end with, like, some random coordinates in the game that would bring you to some, like, abandoned house. It might have been the one in Ohio. I don't remember. That was the one people, like, really want to know about, that one in Ohio. The sad truth is that they're all just random abandoned places that I found on Google Maps. There's no correlation. There's no story behind them. I know nothing about them. They just added to the, uh, they added to the spooky feel of Rust. But I really liked the style that these games evolved into, like, the sort of detailed but not that detailed look. So after that, I had this game, which I don't really remember that well, so we're gonna experience this one together. Okay, actually, I do remember this one. This one was pretty cool. I sort of liked these later ones, not because of uh, them being, like, great games. But uh, they just looked kind of cool, like, the atmosphere was nice. I feel like these were uh, some cool builds. I'm still proud of these. But the thing with Rust is that most of these games were just like literally like horror games. They weren't, they didn't have a story to them. They were just like one time playthrough horror experiences. That was literally it. I started to try to put like a story together later on, like towards the way end, but I never actually made anything. So all these games were literally, they're just horror game experiences that kind of felt like they could be related, but I actually had nothing planned. Okay, then we got this one, and apologies if I'm going a little fast, but I just want to get through these games sort of fast, because there's a lot of them, and a lot of them are not that impressive. This was like another one that had that same sort of build style to it. I really liked this one. It was just a, a nice horror game, I thought. There wasn't too much going on. It was just like the same other ones where random things would appear, and there'd be a guy that would chase you down. They weren't, they, like the Rust stories, they were not that unique. I guess I actually didn't have as many as I thought, because this is one of the later ones. This is one of like the last Rust games that I made. This one I put a lot of time into for basically no reason. I don't know why I did, but it came out really nice. I really like the build in this. This is just another one where it's like based off an abandoned insane asylum. Like there's not really a correlation. I just thought they looked cool. All the fake players in the game were like very basic. They didn't they didn't function off a script that like let them go everywhere. They just walked to these like each of these points randomly i feel like if i had more time i could have turned a lot of this into something like i had a lot of ideas this was supposed to be some like it was like hawkins lab from stranger things but it wasn't actually this is based off uh this is based off uh camp hero on long island 
you look it up you'll see it's like the same exact thing this one i probably put the most time into out of any rust game but still like if i wanted to i probably could have turned this into something a lot cooler but it was still just like a one-time playthrough horror experience which i feel like is what rust basically was like rust was never really a myth like i was just making horror games that i thought were cool and then like twists got added on and the character kind of evolved with it but everything was just originally intended to be like just a horror experience okay then i kind of had a lot that just never really got finished this one was super basic this was just like how you get into the next game this one i just used uh the npcs that i'd made before it's kind of a little creepy now that okay yeah they just move all at once i feel like it's even more unnerving that they just stand here and don't do anything now Okay, this was actually kind of cool. I forgot I made them chat. I feel like if I uh, spent more time actually coding this to be good, this could have been kind of cool. Yeah, that happens. This is like the last real Rust game that I made. So this was, when was this? This was back in 2019, early 2019. So it's been basically like four and a half years since the last real Rust game. But this one was... Another one with fake players, as you can see, got a little repetitive towards the end. This map I really liked, it was just a cool scene here. Really, Rust was just like, towards the end, just, uh, I put together scenes that I thought were cool and put it into a game. But over here, you'd have like this meeting that would go on. This was kind of cool. I think this was like inspired from, um, from Midsummer, maybe? I don't even remember. But uh, again, not much that would actually happen here. You'd, uh, set up a meeting, I don't know. I feel like with a lot of these Rust games, I feel like they weren't that great looking back on them. But uh, they were fun experiences for sure. Like nothing was furnished in here, it was all very quick builds. So after Rust, I wanted to make something more with like a story and that's what Operation Rust was. But I never got to finish it, uh, I just didn't have the time for it anymore. But um, this was like supposed to be like a full-fledged like myth sort of thing with a story. I had like a plan for it where it would like revolve around like AI and sort of like the fake players I had in the older games. That was the idea. That was like the story that Rust kind of evolved into, but like I said, there wasn't really anything at first. But this one, I put a lot of time into making this look good. Um, none of this actually does that much. This was inspired from uh, a TV show Lost. This is like uh, they had like a hatch in the show. If you look up a picture, Lost TV show hatch, you'll probably find something like this. This was just like a bunker sort of thing. You put in some code, you'd figure out some stuff. You'd go into this hallway. Yeah, and I guess I had freaky noises in there too. But uh, this one never actually became of anything. You probably don't even know that game exists. But yeah, that's basically all the Rust games. I'm sure I missed one or two, but they're all pretty much the same. I know there wasn't a whole lot of explanation in this video, but there's not really a lot to do. Every game is pretty much just exactly how it looks. There's no other hidden secrets. If something doesn't look like it functions, or if something doesn't look like it has a purpose, it probably doesn't. Like in the computers, I think I had one program in there where you'd click on some numbers and it would change, it would be random every time. And it was made to look like it served a purpose, but it, it, it did not. I know I could probably do a better job with a video like this, but I figured it'd just be easier if I was just like basically talking to the camera. But if you have any ideas or recommendations or other things you want me to talk about about Rust, I'm not against it. I usually just do content that's a little different now, but I, I don't mind touching on it. I know a lot of people still like really love the myth and want it to come back. And while, you know, I would love to make new content for us eventually i just don't have the time and i think it's better if it's just kind of closed where it is now too you know i haven't been in the myth community really ever and i haven't been a part of it especially in the last four or five years but i know there's definitely a lot of other people out there that are making good content and i think it'd be great to see the myth community sort of come back in the future i'm not sure if i would necessarily be there but it's kind of unfortunate that the whole thing just collapsed because of one person but yeah, don't expect to see any new Rust horror games anytime soon because I have no plan on making those. I know recently I saw like on Twitter, there was some guy on TikTok that said they were me. I have no intention of bringing Rust back. If you see anything like that where they're claiming to be me, it's not.